Hello friends, welcome to another bit of our AdventureCraft Pixelmon series. Um, it is nighttime right now, both in-game and IRL, and I was just hoping to do a little bit of chill work um, around the farm here uh, before bed. So it's basically just a wholesome bit of building. I'm going to work on our farm, I think. Let's see, let's go out here. We've got some visitors. I have cleared some space. Woo! Where we talked about making a farm along the side of our little pond here. We've got extra visitors. Oh, I broke my sugar cane. Oh my gosh. Oh, ha! I forgot to put my armor back on. Let's see if we can go back out and get our stuff. I know that we've got a gravestone here, but skeleton one and a half hearts. I'll hit you with sugar cane. There we go. And push. So let's put our armor back on this time with a shield. Let's see, shovel one, axe two, pickaxe three, sword four. So, as I was saying, we have our little farm space here. I actually spent some time earlier today messing around in a creative world to try and figure out a way to automate our apricorn farming and this is something that I've tried to do many many times um, and have just failed at because they are ornery stubborn things that don't like to be automated uh, lots of mods have stuff that you can automate things with and then the apricorns just have not responded to them uh, I know that people have actually made mods specifically altering apricorns so that they can be farmed automatically, but I have found a way to do it, um, and we're going to get into that today. So um, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, infrastructure with maybe some uh, warehouse building looking things. Um, I think we're also going to incorporate our melon and bee farms over here so we'll see what we get up to it might be a multi-level farm um, I will get back to you through our building process Okay, well that was a lot of fun. It is a brand new day here. We finished what we were working on earlier this week and before we show that I will admit that I did get a little carried away. Um, we have had a couple work days where I just was extremely zonked out after you know a long day of work and wanted to get some stuff done in Minecraft. Um, I have actually rebuilt a lot of our automatic apricorn farm like eight different times trying to get it to work properly uh, or at least work in the way that I would like. I think we're just going to have to live with this final result just until I get some more um, technical stuff done for machines because it looks like there's some filters I need to make to make sure it works. Um, otherwise we have kind of a small inventory that we can dump into a big inventory. 
It'll make sense when we actually get into our warehouse here. So let's go look and see what all we got done in our building. So here is our little path up from the front of the house and our waystone. It goes to our garden. Um, we've got the wonderful DecoCraft um, produce sign here. As we come down into the garden itself, we have carrots, wheat, and potatoes. And then back there is our automatic apricorn farm. I did also add these really nice DecoCraft um, candles, and we are being attacked by Weedle. Short intermission. There we go. These DecoCraft candles, which are wonderful. Um, let's go ahead and grab this really quick. This is our Whalmer pail for apricorn farming. We'll need that in just a second. I did also add some beehives. This is kind of what all of our chest bees were for. Um, so we've got a bunch of beehives in our farm. Each one has a queen bee that we keep um, cycling over and they produce all of these items. So we've got bee grubs. Which may sound a little gross, but they actually replace any meat product in Pam's Harvest Craft foods. So if we look at Pam's Harvest Craft, all of these meals here can be created. Well, most of them can be created with one form of meat. And of course, I click on one. Yeah, here we go. So um, the grub can go in here and it actually works for meat not saying that we'll use it for that but it is possible to use it uh, we get honey from these box here but we have to put them in a presser doesn't show it here I'll show you guys in our kitchen um, and then the wax comb can be used to make candles which is really useful so we just go through check our beehives every once in a while I'll go ahead and clear all these out as they've been sitting for a bit um, but let's keep looking around. I was hoping that we wouldn't have Pokemon spawning in here, which is why I've got these fence gates um, going. But I guess they still spawn on like this spawnable area here. So what can you do? This is what our farm looks like from the outside right now. I think I'm going to add a little more decoration on this side, we might actually extend this and maybe have a little dock area on the side of our little pond for some fishing uh, and maybe some other Pixelmon stuff. I'll show you guys later. We've got some ranch options for actually having Pokemon out in the water. But let's go back and look at our farm space. Um, the secret or the trick to this farm is we made these mechanical users. You can see it's collecting the apricorns in here. And then when this inventory fills up, we'll come over and turn off our redstone signal. And that will actually allow our transfer um, cables to pull all of the inventories out and put them into these chests. So as you can see through our building process and through me messing with this automated farm, we actually have quite a bit of apricorn saved up here. This is just one of two chests that it's been split in. So if we come over to this other one, you can see um, we've got all kinds of stuff to work with in here. And the other pro tip is if you take your Whalmer pail, you can once a day advance a stage of growth on your apricorns which pretty much gives you almost another free apricorn a day or you know speeds it up for you so we're gonna go back out here really quick put this away before I forget because I've been doing that constantly let's take a look at these active or mechanical users again because as I say, this is the, the secret to this automated farm. So if we look at mechanical user, there's the miner, the crafter, and we're looking for the user. It just takes um, a dropper, a lever, and this resonating redstone crystal. These are 
really easy to make. It's four redstone and an ender shard. And to make an ender shard, you just have to make a glass cutter and use it on an ender pearl. So glass cutter is three iron and a stick. So we'll come back to our mechanical user and that's how we get our resonating redstone crystal. So with these, if you go into their interface, you put redstone on. Um, I'm sure you can probably figure out another way to control these. I'm using a redstone signal, so that's how I'm activating it. The sneaky part is activate block with item. If you don't have this set, it will not harvest apricorns. Um, basically, it's trying to right click the apricorn plant, and that's what's collecting the apricorn itself. So as you can see, we've got two in here now. Um, let me see if I can come down here really quick and show you guys. We've got our transfer pipes coming out the bottom with our, tra or yeah, transfer pipes here. They go to either side with the chests there. So let's put our stuff back. And we can turn this off. And the mechanical user that had the two apricorns in it has sent them off and they should collect in our chest here. It does take a little bit sometimes for them to register. Um, I have noticed the other trick that I made for this farm here is I have actually made a chunk loader. You can see it's loading three by threes for this chunk or these chunks. So this place will always be loaded and always be farming. So it'll fill up these three by three inventory spaces. Even when we're miles and miles and miles away out exploring or doing other Pixelmon things. So this is the very first automated apricorn farm I've ever been able to do. So I'm super happy with it. Even if it doesn't work exactly like I would like it to. Uh, which would just be to automatically go through the transfer pipes without having to turn this off. Um, we may be able to find out or to make, I think it's a redstone knot. Yeah, a redstone knot filter for our pipes underneath these because right now this flashing redstone signal is stopping them from pulling out. Uh, so if we add those filters in, this should all work all the way automatically and I'll go in here and we wouldn't have to worry about this being too full. So that's what we got to work on or that's what we worked on this week after work. I've added another little back door here with an elevator. Right now it goes to a whole lot of nowhere. So I think we'll probably end up doing some food farms and some more kind of Pam's harvest craft farms over here but I think that's enough for now we've been doing quite a bit of building and messing and I honestly need a break from it all if we come up to our house here I have upgraded our kitchen so I actually went out and I managed to find a mesa. It took a ridiculous amount of time, but it was one of the things that I could do after work where it didn't take much brain power. And it honestly was just a lot of running and jumping through biomes. So I didn't feel like it was truly film worthy, but you can see we have traveled for hours and hours going to all these different areas looking for a simple mesa. This is where we found it finally. Oops. All the way up here. So grabbed some terracotta, came back, and we started work on our cooking for blockheads kitchenettes. So if we go to, oops, come on. Ooh, lag there. If we go to at cooking for, oops, I guess we'll just go at cooking. You can see all these different kitchenettes. 
or kitchen pieces. This is the main one that you want to build. This is our cooking table. We used our Cooking for Blockheads 2 book that we had made before. Um, and then we also made the oven, which is just iron, a furnace, some glass. You can make that without uh, terracotta. Same with the fridge, which is very nice. Um, you can actually upgrade the fridge, but I'm going to do that later, I think. I'm just going to stick with the normal fridge for now. Uh, we replaced our well with a sink. Um, this actually provides water to recipes, so we don't have to make the fresh water like we were uh, before. Um, we've got the kitchen counters. So all of these count as connected blocks, so all of this storage registers in this cooking table. Select an item on the right to see its recipe. We could do that, or we could sort by hunger restored. And as you can see, I've got some other food items that we've made here that are very decent. So three each with a ton of saturation there. This is a bonkers piece of food. Patreon pie. Um, I kind of feel like it's a little cheaty. Um, I know it's probably made for the Patreon uh, folks, but if you look at it, it's just honey or sugar, dough, and a golden nugget, and it's five drumsticks and 12 saturation. It actually, like, the saturation drains almost instantly, but still, this is a little cheaty in my book. So we made some of them, but I don't think I'm going to make them again. I think I'm going to stick with some of these more complete meals that actually take some effort and some work to make. But we can click on this and it can make stuff out of all of the ingredients in your kitchen. So say we want to make veggie strips. I'm going to just make a bunch. Ta-da, we have veggie strips or we can have steak and chips. We're gonna shift click and we get all of our steak and chips. And you can see it's pulled stuff from our fridge and we can actually put those back in there for now. And it's probably pulled, yeah, some stuff from one of these here. Um, this does also count as a, an infinite water source, I think. Let's go make an actual faucet really quick for this because I want to show you something else that you've probably heard over the past couple minutes because we have another problem that we've run into. <laughs> That's funny that there's a hoot hoot in there. We have captured one zombie villager. We have captured two zombie villagers and three zombie villagers. So we have the possibility now of curing these guys and getting a villager set up here at home. Um, I would probably have to make another building for them, which I don't want to do right now. I think we're going to take a break from building for a little bit. And we might look at some just dedicated Pixelmon time because um, as you can see, we've cleaned up our team. I did catch a Farfetch'd, uh, one of the Galarian ones, which is the fighting type. And in the past, I have had a lot of trouble evolving those Pokemon into Surfetch'd because you have to get a certain amount of crits in a single battle. This one surprised me because right after I caught it, we were attacked by a Miltank and it evolved that battle. So it instantly evolved into Surfetch'd, which was like really surprising. Super funny. But we are going to focus on some Pixelmon. And if I go in here, you can see we have actually caught a couple more Pokemon since the last time when we were out on all of our crazy adventures looking for that Mesa. Um, we caught a Toxel, Zorua, um, a Snorlax. I actually just threw a Dusk Ball at this guy. Um, and it instant caught as I was running away to try and catch a Riolu, uh, who I didn't catch. 
Um, I think we ended up catching one after that, like later, but uh, we got a Pikachu as well. If I go over, we have another kind of super surprise. Boosh. We have two more shinies with probably one of the best ones in the game. We have a shiny Magikarp. Um, I know I did ask for nicknames in the comments, but I think we're going to... Let me just make sure what gender is this guy. Does it even say? Oh, it's a girl. Well, I was going to name it James after the, the show, but we'll have to maybe see about a different name then. Um, and then we got a shiny Whisper that was actually just hanging out on the side of my warehouse here. So I didn't really have a choice. We had to catch him too. Um, but if we go to our other boxes, we have all these starter Pokemon that we've caught while out adventuring. And then we've got these Pokemon that are possible team members that we also caught. So we got a Riolu, which is very nice. Super good attacker. We got Gibble, which of course... Garchomp is amazing. Paris is an awesome um, catching Pokemon Pokemon because it has it learns Spore and False Swipe. So it'll put Pokemon to sleep and take it down to 1 HP. But I kind of want to keep Ivysaur on the team. Um, as you can see, we did get a Leftovers. That was from our Snorlax actually when we caught it. So he was holding that. But... I think we're going to go out and look for some other Pokemon to add to our roster. I was hoping to have a lot more in this episode. Um, I had two more hours of video footage to add to it. As you can see, we've got some Pokemon on the side that we caught, including the wonderful Klefki, um, another favorite of mine, and a wonderful wall Pokemon with all of its resistances. We did also go do a bunch of mining and exploring and saw some really cool stuff. Unfortunately, all of that footage has corrupted and crashed and just didn't work out. So, I haven't been able to actually put it in the episode here. OBS has just been a pain in the butt today. Um, it didn't help that in the middle of one of our recordings we did have kind of the power cycle because we've had a major storm here uh, one where the wind has actually blown over my uh, metal grill outside which is huge and heavy uh, so it's just an insane storm out there uh, looks like we were just visited by a snivy so maybe we'll be able to catch another starter here uh, we did also catch ourselves a Chimchar in the footage that uh, was lost, but let's do a real quick Pokemon battle. Maybe use a quick ball. See if we can catch it that way. Starter Pokemon have a, a lower chance to catch than other Pokemon. Yeah, no. Um, anyways, I'm super bummed. We had done a lot in the uh, interim, and I was hoping to add all that in, but I guess not. I guess we can go and check a couple things now, and hopefully check it out. Uh, let's go... Oh, I can't even run now. Uh, let's do tackle. We'll try and finish up this battle with Snivy and see if we can catch it still. With Ivysaur, I think we can tackle it down into some low HP like that. And then since it's now nighttime, let's try a couple Dusk Balls. We did also go raid a couple more villages and sold a bunch of stuff from Poke Centers and uh, from random loot that we'd found around the world. Uh, so I am currently sitting at quite a lot of money, uh, and I'm running low on Pokeballs. Uh, I know we have our Apricorn farm going, and we have a bunch of stuff that we can do there, but I'm not ready to process them yet. I guess for our missing footage, the most important thing that we did was we made a waystone to a really cool... 
mob hill that we found. So here's our waystone that we made. It's called Mob Hill Farms. And we have to dodge this lava pit. If we go in here, we cleared out this little space. And if we go down, I believe this is Thomcraft. It has a zombie spawner, a skeleton spawner, and then as we were down here looting this chest here, which had a sneaky piece of dynamite under it, we saw that it was a trap chest, made sure it was safe. Uh, we heard a bunch of zombies still after we had killed everything. Uh, and then looking on the map, it looked like they were just beyond, so I mined a couple blocks out. And lo and behold, we have an actual zombie dungeon right next to it, which I have never seen before. This is crazy. Um, these mob hills spawn randomly in the world, and then these dungeons spawn randomly. So to have them right next to each other here is just bonkers. So we looted all the cool stuff out of here, took it back with us, and we will be making a nice mob farm down here. Uh, as soon as I can figure out a good way to do it. Um, and we might be making a more advanced one in the future where we pick up these mob spawners. Because um, I noticed that if we go home here, all of the other spawners that we have broken so far are able to be picked up. And we might be able to actually turn them into a farm. So here's cave spiders and here's a couple of zombie spawners. So I'm not sure how to actually do these. Soul vials. Looks like there are... You can use it for any mob, maybe? But I'm not sure... Let's see, it turns it... It still says a broken spawner, but I'm guessing it fills it. Oh, here you go. Combine with a powered spawner and an anvil to set spawn type. Interesting. So... That was one of the main things that we got up to in our break from building. Um, we did a bunch of exploring, a bunch of resource gathering. Um, I really wish that I could have shown this. Uh, we found a bunch of diamond ore right next to each other uh, in an underground kind of lake or river uh, where every time we swam around a corner, we saw a new patch of diamonds. We were able to mine it out, but that's all we were able to get up to today like I said I'm super bummed we had two hours of footage and it all just went kaput um, so sorry guys hopefully we'll be back with some dedicated pixel mod content tomorrow or later for the next episode I want to catch some more Pokemon I want to go battle some gyms and I want to get some more pokeballs made um, we're getting closer and closer to a, a decent workable team which um, is when I'll actually go out and do all of our maybe grinding for levels and evolving and flying around on the back of Pokemon but until we get there thank you guys for joining um, I hope you had fun hope you're enjoying the content and Hope to see you next time. Thanks, and see you later, friends.